Cryptocurrencies that are currently ranked first and second in terms of market capitalization are Bitcoin and Ethereum, who are considered industry pioneers. However, there are more than 5,000 additional cryptocurrencies in circulation, each associated with a distinct blockchain or project. Given that XRP is frequently featured in the headlines of major cryptocurrency news, you might wonder, what is XRP? The digital currency known as XRP is frequently referred to the name Ripple because the project is driven by a company called Ripple Labs. It focuses on providing financial institutions and payment processors with real-time payment settlements and currency exchange services. That's why by some it is called a digital asset built for global payments. A blockchain-like network called the XRP Ledger makes it easier to make payments using XFRP cryptocurrency since it powers its technology for cross-border payments. As a result, Platform supports a payment settlement, asset exchange, and remittance system that functions similarly to the SWIFT. It functions as a worldwide, centralized service for international money and security transfers. Okay, now let's look how exactly does XRP work. Because the internal ledger of the servers ensures transactions based on consensus, that is what makes it centralized. The XRP Ledger Consensus Protocol powers XRP, and it does not offer mining rewards. Ripple Labs manages the distribution of new coins. The Ripple platform's intriguing feature is that transactions aren't restricted to XRP. The protocol also accepts cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and fiat currencies like dollars or euros. But the XRP network is less secure due to its centralized architecture. That's why, in contrast to Bitcoin, it can process transactions more quickly. This is primarily because the pool of validators is centralized, allowing them to share data more quickly and reaching consensus a lot faster. But how is Ripple different from RippleNet? Ripple is made up of a remittance network, currency exchange, and real-time gross settlement system, in short RTGS. The platform facilitates instantaneous and low-cost transactions between traditional banks, payment processors, and financial institutions through a distributed payment protocol based on blockchain technology. It does this by utilizing RippleNet and RippleX Current, two main components. In contrast, RippleNet is a unique worldwide network of banks and other financial organizations that use Ripple's distributed platform to send and receive payments. The goal of RippleNet's design was to provide inexpensive, real-time payments. Okay, now we should explain what is the Ripple Protocol Consensus Algorithm, or RPCA. A blockchain protocol called the Ripple Transaction Protocol, or RTXTP, is comparable to the ones used by Ethereum or Bitcoin. It provides platform for cheap and effective international money transfers. The Ripple consensus algorithm helps the protocol reach this level of speed efficiency. All participating nodes apply the RPCA every few seconds to ensure the accuracy and agreement of the network. The current ledger is deemed closed and becomes the last closed ledger after a consensus is reached. Finally, let's describe the Ripple versus SEC case. In December 2020, Brad Garlinghouse, the CEO of Ripple, disclosed to the public the SEC intention to sue the company. A few days later, on December 22, Ripple was sued by the SEC for marketing XRP as an unlicensed security. The agency stated that it had broken the law by giving its stakeholders $1.3 billion worth of Ripple's XRP token. The SEC was debating whether Ripple's native token, XRP, which represents a share in the company, is a security or if it is actually a cryptocurrency similar to Bitcoin. The SEC stated that co-founder Larson and CEO Garlinghouse made more than $600 million when they sold their XRP during the bull market. On July 13, 2023, the case of SEC versus Ripple was resolved. The court determined that although Ripple did not break any securities laws when selling XRP on exchanges, it did break them when it offered institutional investors unregistered securities. So, that's the end of this video. Now if you have found the content helpful, don't forget to give a like and subscribe to our channel for more content like this.